Hello horror fans, what's going on and welcome back to the ziggurat of zombification, the hive mind of horror, top 5 scary videos. As per usual, it's me, Jack Finch, your spirit guide through this strange and eldritch place, as we wipe the sleep from our eyes, sigh heavily into our coffee cup, and take a look at 5 scary night shift horror stories that will haunt your dreams. Before we begin, you know the drill. If you're a fan of this video, why don't you go ahead and give it a big thumbs up and share it to any night shift workers that need some fear to keep them awake. Useful stuff. Make sure to hit that subscribe bell so you can stay up to date with our latest and greatest uploads. Now, I don't know about you, but I've actually been a night shift worker, fresh out of university, the first job I could get. And let me tell you, there's something terrifying about being the only person awake on the opposite side of life. You almost feel like you're the only person on the planet in that point. It's isolation with nothing but your own mind to keep you company that can wander and strike fear from even the most harmless of places. Kicking off at number 5, we have the aptly named car dealership. This story comes from Reddit user Third Eye Open 2 who was a car salesperson at the time who worked into the evening shift. Things were winding down and they just finalised a deal with a couple purchasing a car. As they were showing them through the car and its controls out on the street of the dealership, a homeless person walked up to the group with a beer in one hand and a grimy plastic bag in the other. He muttered to them, look at this, and then open the bag. The wife screamed and her husband yelled for him to get away or he'll call the cops. Well, the guy wasn't phased and he quickly replied, call them because they've got to see this. Right there and then the homeless guy reaches into the bag and pulls out a severed head. He then calmly placed it on the steps leading up to the dealership, claiming to have found the head and felt like people needed to see it. He explained that he planned on cleaning it up and using it as a candle holder. Well, of course they called 911 and to cut a long story short, it turned out that the homeless guy's dog had discovered a semi-mass grave out in the woods and retrieved something a little bit more gruesome than a mere bone. Coming in at number 4, Antichrist. This story comes from a ferociously named Reddit user, Gentleman Bastard, who tells the story of a time he worked the graveyard shift at a mental health facility. He begins by explaining that because some of their patients are in danger of hurting themselves or others, it's down to him to check on them every 15 minutes or so. He'd open the door, shine a light on their beds, and make sure that generally his patients are still breathing. It was the weekend, and on this particular occasion, he had two patients suffering from a psychoaffective disorder and had to put the both of them in the same room. Strangely enough, both patients had been claiming to be Jesus, and our narrator was curious to see how that would play out. Well, it's 3am and our narrator is doing his rounds when he opens the door and finds one of the guys crouching on the floor in a gorilla stance. He shines his light on him, no response. He asks, hey buddy, you okay? No response. He continues to stare, unblinkingly, no movements. Just as he steps inside, the other patient, his roommate, who had been hiding behind the door, jumps on our narrator's back and starts choking him out. In a panic, he shifts his weight and uses the momentum to toss him off, rolling across the floor. Well, it turned out both patients who figured themselves Jesus marked our narrator as the Antichrist and conspired together to kill him. The scary part wasn't the attack itself, but the coordination behind the whole thing and the unknown fear of two unstable minds. Next up at number three, The Bouncer. This is a great story from Reddit user Tasty Duck, who used to be a bouncer at several different areas in downtown Toronto. He enjoyed working the patio area despite not being a smoker, but it was outdoors and he could chat to people. One club that he worked in was super cheap and the patio was more of a chain link fence with a gap in it which people would try and sneak in through. Well on this particular night, Tasty Duck felt lazy, so he stood in the opening with his back to the street. All of a sudden, he felt someone approach from behind. It wasn't unusual, people tried to blag their way in all the time, but our narrator was having none of it. He puffed himself up, determined to ignore him. Well, this went on for about 10 minutes and all of a sudden, our narrator was getting a bit creeped out because he could still feel the guy standing behind him without saying or doing anything at all. He turned around curious as to what would meet him and he stopped. The guy was taller than him, maybe six foot four and very well dressed. He was also covered head to toe in blood. His own blood or someone else's? Well, Tasty Duck never found out because the police were shortly called but even though he was arrested and forced into the back of a police car, he never took his eyes from him. Well, coming in at number two, four 
or Leonard Wood. Our next story is yet again a tale from the military. Spooky stuff always seems to happen there. This particular story comes from Jack11058, who did his basic military training while at Fort Leonard Wood in Missouri. Now, these barracks were pretty old, dating back to around the 1950s or 60s, and every night a number of recruits were assigned onto fire guard duty. Essentially, a monotonous night shift that involved mopping the floors and trying to stay awake until the next soldier came on duty. In the hallway where most of the mopping took place, there was an old set of speakers that the drill sergeants would make their announcement through, and occasionally yell at a sleeping recruit to wake them up on guard duty. One night, our narrator was starting to nod off, sitting on a chair, trying to stay awake, when the speakers crackled and he heard a soft, strange voice, barely a whisper. It was a woman's voice, private, yet everyone outside, right now. The hum of the speaker remained open, private, everyone outside, right now. He didn't know if it was sleep deprivation or the drill sergeants playing a prank, so he made his way down the hall to see if the other guard duty had heard anything. Nothing, not a thing. Well, our recruit buried it in the back of his mind until a few weeks later when him and a few of the staff telling ghost stories around a fire. An old drill officer told the story of the first ever female drill sergeant on camp sometime in the 70s or 80s who had faced a lot of pressure and harassment whilst there. It was unrelenting, harsh, and she couldn't take it anymore and so hung herself from some exposed water pipes in the barracks. Those pipes, well, years later they'd plastered over them, hiding them from view. And it was there that they mounted a set of speakers, exactly where she took her own life. And at our final spot coming in at number one, the Banshee. I've worked as a bartender on and off for many years and let me tell you, you see some creepy people from behind a bar. Not as creepy as this story though from reddit user and bartender dope yeti great name it was around 2 a.m and the bar was shutting down when a seemingly homeless woman made her way into the bar working in a city our narrator was used to vagrants and strays making their way inside out of hours so his manager yelled to her hey sorry we're closing up we won't be able to serve you you'll have to leave she kept walking slowly and silently towards the bar staring straight ahead with a blank face as she got closer he realized she looked particularly unusual her skin was gray Gray, like no colour he'd ever seen in his life. It wasn't dirty or tanned, it was incredibly light grey, tight and with no wrinkles. She also had a tattoo of four strange lines on her face that all started at one point in the centre of her chin and continued down her neck in a ray-like pattern. In an almost unnerving fashion, she was, she was completely barefoot. Ignoring the shouts from the manager, the woman pulled up a chair at the bar and turned her head slowly towards our narrator. Locking eyes, she said to him, I like you. The bouncer eventually made his way to the woman and put his hands on her to eject her when she broke out into an extremely loud, high-pitched, manic scream. It was a scream straight out of a horror movie. Even creepier, the whole time she was screaming, she was looking at our narrator dead in the eye, unblinking and unmoving. Well, what do you guys think? Was she just strangely strange or was she something more, something paranormal, a banshee? Speak your mind in the comment box down below and, well, just pop by and say hello. If you've enjoyed this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. I I sincerely hope you've enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it. As always, you've been watching Top 5 Scary Videos. I've been your host, Jack Finch, and until next time, you take it easy.